Hello noses, thank you so much for joining today's ingredient deconstruct session. Um, so for those who have um, watched other video, you know how it works. Uh, I go through um, a selection of ingredients that falls under a specific theme and I talk you through one by one and uh, tell you what they smell, how they use, why they are so um, great to use in perfumery or how to uh, use them in your formulation really and uh, to kind of give you some keys and tools for you to take on for your practice at home. So today's theme for the ingredient selection, so I've selected 10 ingredients and the theme that I'm covering today is the weird and wonderful ingredients of perfumery. So um, not everything in a perfumer organ smells amazing, okay? You've got some ingredients that when you smell them, they might be unpleasant or they might be a bit strange okay to your nose um, the idea of it where they come from where they extracted can also be a little bit strange so I talk you through a selection of ingredients in the category in the family of aldehydes so I'll explain to you what aldehydes are um, I'll talk you through as well um, some ingredients that are that belong to a category balsamic leathery note of course um, which is a great category to talk about an animalic note so one thing that is very important about these ingredients the weird and wonderful ingredients is that it's not because they don't smell pleasant at first smell that they're not used much in perfumery in fact a lot of them are extremely used in fragrances but what you have to think about is always perfumery formula is always about the proportion and how much you put in your formula okay so what you um, have to consider is that pretty much all of the ingredients that we talk about today will be used in quite small quantity okay if you use them into too large quantity chances are that you're going to ruin your formula you're going to ruin your perfume because you're really going to overtake and what you want to use these ingredients for is for the kind of like the, the nice side of them okay so if you want to if you put too much of them then it will instantly come with the bad side of them if that makes sense or the weird side of them I don't like to say bad but like the kind of you know the side that is just like too much okay so let's start with aldehydes aldehydes what are they so aldehydes from the category aldehydic um, aldehydes is A-L-D-E-H-Y-D-E. -E. Aldehydes is a chemical family of component of synthetic ingredients, scented synthetic ingredients, that essentially all fall within that same characteristic that tend to be extremely, extremely intense scent um, and they tend to have all of the same characteristic, which will bear a profile that is citrusy, that is floral and very metallic. Okay, so one of the key dominant scent of aldehyde is this ring of this metallic cold effect when you smell them individually. Aldehydes are naturally occurring molecules and they, um, they happened in a lot of citrus and a lot of flowers okay so that's why you kind of see those facets into these components you've got lots of aldehydes that are used by perfumers essentially you follow the line so c8 c9 c10 c11 c12 l c12 mna so these are the most used be careful for those who know um who've heard about aldehydes before you've got a, a second type of families which are called aldehyde c14 c16 and c18 plus and you've got a few more afterwards these ones are technically not aldehydes in terms of chemical families okay so they are lactones and they have a smell that is completely different from the aldehydes that we're talking about now they have a fruity smell lactonic smell and they are in fact do not belong to the chemical category of aldehyde so the aldehydes that we talk about here today are real aldehydes, as in, in the chemical structure, okay? So if you don't know much about, uh, about chem chemistry, that's completely fine. Just give it a little bit of a Google to understand what aldehyde is and how 
they all kind of sim uh, the similarity in terms of uh, structure of like chemical structure so let's smell one of the aldehydes that we will uh, typically use in perfumery it's called aldehyde c9 uh, and aldehyde c9 as a, as most aldehydes have got this extremely intense lifted unpleasant at first and that have this kind of fresh clean metallic vapory scent um with this kind of you know citrusy but the rind of citrus, you know, the cold part of citrus, not the juice part of citrus, the, 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 the more metallic part of citrus, okay? So C9, like um, all aldehydes, are used in extremely small quantities, okay? So here I dilute it at 1%, but you can also dilute it at even less than this, 0 0.1%, 0 0.4, and that. Um, why are they used, aldehydes? They used to bring a intense or they used to make your fragrance project become quite big at the start and aldehyde will be quite projecting that's almost an ingredient a type of ingredients to use as a tool in your formula okay so if you find that your formula your perfume is a little bit flat then aldehyde can be your friend in just a small quantity it will bring that intense projection intense lift okay aldehyde c12l is of course slightly different to the C9, but bear the same type of characteristic. Okay, remember all of these components in this family are have this the same style of scent. So this one is a little bit more floral, and uh, but it it does have that cold vapor vapory metallic tone to it okay so almost a little bit um i know that it doesn't it's not going to sound very good but you know when the citrus has gone off a little bit so it becomes um a little bit of a colder version to like a not it doesn't have the sweetness and the zestiness of the citrus anymore okay so think of these aldehydes as ingredients that are used pretty much in all sorts of perfumery you find them a lot in uh, soap, in detergent, because they bring that kind of cleanness, that, that openness at the start. But you can also find them a lot in luxury perfume, and the, the point of them is to bring that kind of freshness projection and very, very big lift. So aldehydes, great ingredients to know about. Do not discard them because you don't like them at first smell. Okay, very important. Another sort of aldehyde that I want to talk to you about is not within the family of the seas that I've just talked about. It's called nonadienal. So nonadienal is belongs actually to the to the category green. You could also put it into aldehydic, but the, it's much more green. Why? It's because nonadienal is actually called um, aldehyde cucumber and clearly you smell nonadienal and you've got that you that, that freshness the green openness of cucumber it does come with this you know negative side of aldehyde that is kind of slightly plasticky and slightly again metallic but this one really does smell straight away of, of cucumber and actually it's a key ingredient that is used in flavor in cucumber flavoring okay so really do think about it um, when you want to create a cucumber note to your fragrance okay extremely extremely small quantity never over the overdose the aldehydes I mean you can obviously if it's your if you want to make a creative point but uh, do you know do not overdo it because obviously as I explained at the start it will bring that kind of negative effect of aldehyde I'm moving on from aldehydes we've talked enough about it to an ingredient that um, I really love some of you would know it might not understand why I put it into this theme of the weird and wonderful ingredients of perfumery is called fear balsam so fear balsam here we go so fur balsam in English accent uh, so fur uh, fur balsam um, is extracted from a conifer 
and so you can see the color is extremely intense this is diluted by the way because fer balsam comes as a paste as a very kind of solid paste and you have to dilute it so um fer balsam very very green it has the color of like moss green and it is extracted from the coniferous the reason why i uh, um, talk about it in this in ingredient selection is because fer balsam is a typical example of an ingredient that is extracted off of a botanical that is a conifer so you would expect the smell of it to be woody to be coniferous but in fact it smells pretty different to this fer balsam is beautiful is amazing it belongs to the category balsamic and the way you describe it it smells of honey apricot jam and strawberries and it has this really kind of warm deep soft tone to it yes it smells woody and it smells mossy but it has more of that kind of sweetness jamminess to it as opposed to what you would expect from fur balsam which should theoretically if you think about it should smell pretty much of like wood and conifer and pine tree um, so fer balsam, I really like it. It's an ingredient that uh, belongs to the base, uh, so it's extremely long-lasting. It's a natural ingredient, so like all natural ingredients, um, it is very complex in nature, in its olfactory profile. As I say, it's very sweet, um, very fruity for coniferous, but it also has a kind of woody and and um and mossy tone to it so uh, think about it if you want to bring a um a sweet mossiness to your fragrance that is very lasting the next family that i want to talk to you about is the leathery okay so leathery really is perfect for the theme that we're talking about the weird and wonderful it obviously as the name indicates names uh, smells or remind you of leather Okay, so um, the first one, the first ingredient that I want to talk to you about is the isobutyl quinoline, quinoline in English, IBQ. Very important molecule if you are looking to create a strong leathery note. So when I say strong leathery notes, it's almost like this comes with a bit of a harshness to it. If you're looking for a leather that is fresh, so think of like um, a new car seat leather or new back seat leather, you know how this leather um, tones comes with almost like a bit of a plasticky, vegetal aspect of it. Um, IBQ, very, um, an ingredient that can actually be quite unpleasant at first extremely strong you have to dilute at a very small proportion in order to it to be um, bearable to your nose and for me the one of the way that i describe ibq is that it smells of green pepper um so it smells of leather of course we talked about it the fresh leather the, the click on leather the plasticky aspect of fresh leather but also of green pepper so i like to describe this as a bit of a almost like a vegetal uh, leather, vegetal cuir. And so um, IBQ is a must ingredient, synthetic ingredients molecule uh, that you need to use when you want to recreate the smell of leathery note, okay? Uh, in small quantity because of course it's not very smooth as an ingredient, it's quite vibrant and quite harsh at the start so it will help to push that leathery facet and leathery note but if you want to smooth out your leather think about bringing a little bit of a softer sweeter tone to your leather accords okay so accords means you create a blend of a few ingredients that is an interpretation of the smell of the ingredients that you try to achieve okay to so think of bringing ibq with patchouli for instance which be smooth smoother a bit more tobacco -y, for instance uh, you can even bring um like almost like sweet uh sweeter note as well to kind of create a little bit more of a of a of a suede style effect okay um, the other one that I want to talk to you about, it's a natural ingredient and it's oud maliki. So oud or yudi, you all know. Oud 
I suppose, or most of you have heard of OOD. It's um, a term that is used as a um, commercial hook. Uh, people love, love, love OOD. Everybody has an OOD perfume in their brand nowadays. Um, so OOD, what is it? So OOD is a, has a very, very interesting story as an ingredient, as a natural ingredient. So first is uh, born in the Middle Eastern region. So it's an ingredient that is attached very, very strongly to the Middle Eastern culture. Oud is um, an extremely expensive ingredient that people in the Middle East buy. Um, so like the piece of wood, they buy it so they can burn it. Um, and it's used it's used in that kind of a home culture okay uh, it can fetch thousands and thousands in price and wood becomes better, better with age it's got a very interesting story because wood actually is um, extracted from a wood that is originally unscented and the process to how it becomes scented is through an infection through with a fungus Okay, so the wood is called alkileria and it can be naturally or manually induced. Um, the, 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 the fungus, um, how do you say, the, uh, the fungus uh, attack. <laughs> I'm looking for that word. But, you know, when you, when you essentially um, get, uh, get an infection. Yes, exactly. So the wood get infected with a fungus. And um, nowadays it's mainly done manually because obviously wood is um, traded and therefore wood has become a, um, like, a, uh, you know, when you... Uh, you grow wood okay so you've got like fields etc um so in the middle east they extra so when the wood is infected it creates this kind of dark resin that then becomes that then is the scented product okay so wood is very very characteristic um it's actually quite easy to describe and it's easy to recognize wood has got three main characteristics it's woody of course it's animalic, so animalic means it smells of um, an animal. So if you think of an animal, you think of like a farm or horse or, you know, the fur, like, um, you know, cat fur or like wild animal fur, okay? So that's what me animals mean. And it's also quite spicy as well. So it's got these three facets, but it's very recognizable because it also has this kind of ambery, soft sweetness to it. So it's an interesting ingredient, extremely complex, great natural ingredient that is going to fall within these categories woody um, animalic ambery and spicy okay the maliki uh, one is a um, wood from Ferminish that is beautiful you've got lots of other wood uh, from different suppliers but Ferminish is one of them that create a very beautiful um, natural extract very intense wood um, Actually, very rarely used in its natural form. Why is because uh, in its natural form in perfume formula? Why is because first it's extremely expensive, used to be quite rare to find, still rare to find, but actually companies like Firmish etc. are growing it a little bit more in a sustainable way, and therefore it's easier to find. Okay, but um, wood small quantity mainly because of the price otherwise you reconstitute it through the use of an accord or you can also use um, synthetic wood but they don't have that same animal warmth than the wood maliki which is wood maliki or other natural wood and um i'm moving on to the next ingredient so the next ingredient is called cashmere cashmeran Okay, so cashmeran, I put it actually here as woody, but some people put it as musky. I'll explain to you uh, about cashmeran. So cashmeran is a, quite a pleasant ingredient that belongs to the chemical family of musks. So for those who know musk, like galaxolide, mucinone, etc., you will know that musk smells pretty much all, not all the same, but within the same characteristic, which is the clean, the powdery, the baby talcum powder, something very soft. Cashmere, although it's a musk and it does bear the same 
underlining characteristic of this kind of clean, soft powdery has got an amazing side to it because cashmeran actually smells very earthy, very woody and very mossy, which is not the case of most musk. Okay, so most musk will be like super, super clean. So think of like a baby skin, baby powder. This one has got this earthiness to it. And it's in fact, personally, I like to describe it as the smell of beetroot. So if you think of a beetroot, you have the earthy note, but you also have the sweet notes. So you know how they extract like sugar from beetroot because it has this kind of like, well, yeah, it's, it's got good sugar content. So, um, in, and I think cashmere for me, for my personal description, it has both of this aspect as well as being powdery and soft and clean. Extremely diffusive materials can fall under both the musky and the woody categories. It's also very coniferous, so it has this kind of woody coniferous tone to it. And think of it as an earthy scent. Extremely original and very diffusive. So diffusive, long lasting and um, very complex in its profile, in its um, olfactory profile. So it can be a very really interesting original ingredient and it's used a lot in perfumes, actually in commercial perfumes. You, you will, when you smell cashmere on its own, you might actually recognize straight away from other formulas that you have smelled before from, you know, a shop. And so the last category that I want to go through with you is the animalic category. So animal, animal, like an animal category, um, what does it mean? It doesn't necessarily mean that is extracted from an animal. And actually, the animal facet of it is mainly what it smells like or what it reminds you of. Okay, so historically, animal ingredients were indeed ingredients that animalic ingredients were indeed ingredients that you were extracted from an animal. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but this is a case of castoreum, of civet. So originally you were scraping glands from an animal, but nowadays these naturally extracted um, ingredients from animal no longer exist or for most of them are on their way out, okay? For obvious ethical reason or because they can be difficult to to trace or to sustain etc and then Brandon no longer necessarily want to use those um, animal based ingredients you're also not allowed to um, use um, to kill an animal in, in, anymore or to test on animal anymore in Europe in cosmetics so um, you, you can still find these natural animal extract but they tend to be rare and they tend to be used in artisanal type of perfume so what does animal means animal leaks notes means that it smells like an animal or it reminds you of an animal so it comes with facets that are not necessarily very pleased pleasant so you think of like fecal note but it can also come with facets that are actually quite pleasant so depending on you know your nose or your own personal sensitivity so you can smell of you know like white fur or horse stable I like I like to describe these uh, type of ingredients as the smell of like horses or horse stable and they're extremely rich they're extremely potent extremely diffusive um, very strong ingredients but they come with a very big personality okay so I want to talk to you about civet civet c-i-v-e-t this one is a synthetic civet okay so I talked to you about uh, why um, animalic ingredients are, are no longer used um, in the natural state and civet uh, like castoreum bear their uh, origin into uh, the extraction from glands of, of actual animals so civet is it used to be a cat this one is a synthetic reconstitution so civet i think for me one of the strongest animalic notes this really uh, smells of yeah, like, you know, fecal notes, again, that whole stable is slightly sweet. It's very addictive, in fact. I know it sounds, it sounds strange, but it's had this smell that is extremely sedative, extremely addictive. And think about these ingredients being used in only, only tiny quantity. Because you put lots of it and that's it, you know, like, people are going to hate you, okay? But in tiny quantities, then 
it can bring some like warm, some addiction, something slightly dirty, but that, you know, can become so beautiful in a composition. So civet is for me one of the strongest of the animalic notes, much stronger than castoreum. Um, civet synthetic, the one that we're talking about, and really is here bringing that, yeah, like farm smell in a nice way. And the last two that I want to talk to you about are also from an animalic, but these ones are slightly different to your typical animalic. They are both synthetic notes, molecules. So the most famous is called the indole, I-N-D-O-L. And this one is also very famous, but a little bit less for, so paracresyl phenyl acetate, okay? Remember this one, paracresyl phenyl acetate. So these two ingredients have in common one thing, they're found naturally in white flowers. So if you think of white flowers, jasmine, lily, tuberose, you think of flowers that have naturally extremely opulent, seductive and um, animalic. They have a dirty note to it. So when you go into a room that have a bouquet of lily, it is so potent that some people can't bear it and they ask to have the bouquet removed from the room actually. So it's extremely spicy, extremely animalic and dirty and this is due to the fact that they contain these naturally, uh, um, naturally um, occurring molecules in very, very tiny quantities. So indoles is one of the ingredients that is, I would say, one of the most used ingredients by perfumers. And um, indole, um, only use in very small quantity. A must if you want to recreate the smell of white flowers. So think of, you know, jasmine again, tuberose, ylang, etc. And so Indo uh, um, smells very flowery, smells quite, you know, dirty. It smells quite jasminic. Um, it has, um, it's, it's, a, it's a strange ingredient to, to define and to describe because it doesn't necessarily bear a link, a direct link to its, you know, to nature. So it doesn't smell of jasmine. Um, it smells um, something quite phenolic. I don't know if you know the, the word phenolic. It smells something quite soapy as well, quite waxy scent as well. Um, so indole is a must, must. You can put it into very small quantity when you want to create um, white flowers. So white flower means the opulent, dirty animal flowers. And the last one that I'm going to talk to you about is the paracresyl phenylacetate. So again, another molecule that uh, you find naturally in um, occurring in nature. This one as well will remind you of that, you know, white flowers. So same thing, lily, jasmine, etc. But this one is quite different to Indo. It is, I would say, much more obviously animalic. So for me, I like to describe it as a little bit, like, you know, the horse fur or uh, the horse stable, but it's also very um, powdery. So it smells also of carnation and it's actually, actually quite sweet. So carnation mimosa type of smell. Um, I really like this ingredient. In fact, this, I find it quite addictive in small quantity. You create or you push that addictive side of a jasmine or tuberose or ylang. So think of these ingredients as tools to help you push certain aspects of your formula. These animalic ingredients, you don't necessarily want them to be um, overpowering or overpresent, but you're going to use them for, the, for their kind of um, dirty and sensual facets that they're going to bring to a perfume. Okay, aldehyde, remember, completely different top notes. You're going to use them for that projection, um, clean, fresh soapiness uh, at the start, and everything else in the middle that we've talked about. Okay, so that's it for that uh, weird and wonderful selection of perfumery. Remember, never discard an ingredient of perfume, always look for the 
various facets that this ingredients of coaching has always try to find that uh, tiny facet that will help you to push a certain element into your formula um, and it's not because it smells unpleasant at the start that is not an ingredient that shouldn't be used actually the contrary Okay, so remember aldehydes or indoles are some of the ingredients that are the most used by coaching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining and uh, watch our other videos um, if you'd like. Uh, we've got lots of contents about, about coaching your ingredients. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Bye!